Good morning. Uh, my name is Abid Faruqi, and I'm also an ophthalmic pathology and research fellow with the Mammalus and Warner Lab. Uh, thank you to my colleagues for giving us such a fascinating talk on intraocular lenses. I hate to break the trend, but I'm going to be talking about another subject that I've become very intimately involved with as a member of the ACS, ASCRS Form Task Force, uh, Toxic Anterior Segment Syndrome. So I'll start off with a case presentation and talk about uh, what TAS is, the di causes, diagnosis, treatment, and how we can kind of uh, assess the outcomes of uh, TAS. So we have a case, present uh, case report from the VA hospital in Indiana in which five men ages 64 through 81 years underwent a clear corneal incision, phacal emulsification surgery with insertion of an Alcon SN60WF lens. Uh, there was significant past medical history in four out of the five men for hypertension and diabetes. However, none of them had any significant ocular history. All surgeries had, uh, were similar in respect to the cataract densities, the amount of energy dissipated during the procedures, and the length of the surgery itself. Uh, all medications and solutions used were the same for each surgery, and there were no recent changes to any medications or surgical procedures or surgical equipment at the VA facility. On post-operative day one, all patients had a diffuse 1 plus to 2 plus corneal edema, a 2 plus to 4 plus anterior chamber uh, white blood cells. Two of the patients had hypopion and fibration, uh, fibrin formation in the anterior chamber, and none of the patients complained of ocular pain. Visual acuity ranged from 2070 to 2400, and all patients had normal intraocular pressures. These patients were felt to have a diagnosis of toxic anterior segment syndrome and were treated accordingly. So I'll refer to toxic anterior segment syndrome as TAS now, and TAS is a sterile inflammation of the anterior segment following any anterior segment surgery. Most commonly, this uh, complication arises after cataract surgery. However, any anterior segment surgery can result in TAS, such as a glaucoma surgery or a corneal transplant. Uh, presentation of the symptoms of TAS generally occur within 12 to 48 hours post-operatively, with the majority of the patients presenting within the first 24 hours. The pathophysiology of this process is thought to be an activation of the inflammatory cascade mediated by a toxic insult that enters the anterior segment of the eye, either during or immediately after the surgery. This inflammatory cascade causes, the toxic uh, substance is, um, is damaging to the corneal endothelium and other sensitive tissues in the anterior segment of the eye. Uh, causing uh, corneal edema from the damaged corneal endotheli endothelium. Also, the trabecular meshwork and the iris are also sensitive structures in the eye for uh, increasing the risk of glaucoma or other iris defects. The prognosis of the, of the inflammation and this uh, cascade, this cascade varies depending on the amount and the type of substance that enters the anterior segment, how long that substance is within the anterior segment and how long before treatment is initiated. So some of the symptoms that patients will come into the clinic presenting with are blurred vision, conjunctival injection, and photophobia. However, pain is usually absent and this will be helpful in distinguishing tasks from another very critical diagnosis, which I will discuss in a few minutes. Uh, some of the signs on, on slit lamp examination is this characteristic limbus to limbus corneal edema. Uh, you'll see increased cell and flare in the anterior chamber. You'll also possibly see hypopion formation and uh, fibrin formation, and a dilated or irregular pupil and increased intraocular pressure. These last two are more commonly seen with more severe cases of TAS. However, it is also likely that um, uh, patients will present with some of these findings. And just a quick note on the increased intraocular pressure. Usually most patients will have normal pressures upon presentation but as the healing process resumes, their pressures will increase. However, some patients will present with a more severe case with damage to the trabecular meshwork already and will have uh, intraocular pressures up to 50 to 60. So here are some of the pictures of the findings that I was just discussing. You'll have a diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema. On the left, you see this increased conjunctival injection with the hypopion uh, and the, in the anterior chamber. And this last picture is a picture of a severe case of TAS in which there is iris atrophy with a fixed, dilated, irregularly shaped uh, pupil and uh, 
iris stroma uh, defect allowing for transillumination of the iris. It's difficult to see here, but the haptics are, visual, are able to be visualized through the iris. So one of the distinguishing uh, diagnoses that is very important to rule out when thinking of TAS is infectious endophthalmitis. So this chart right here is to help distinguish some of the main uh, differences between the two entities. One of the first I want to draw your attention to is the onset of symptoms. In TAS, this generally occurs very acutely within 12 to 48 hours. However, in infectious endophthalmitis, it takes a little bit longer, usually two to seven days post-operatively. And uh, even the most virulent strains of bacteria won't result in symptoms until a few days after. Uh, the cor corneal edema um, is limbus to limbus, and I hate to sound repetitive, but it's very uh, characteristic in TAS. In infectious endophthalmitis, you might have focal edema or none at all. And in the anterior segment inflammation, it's, it's generally a little bit more, more severe in infectious endophthalmitis with greater hypopion and fiber inflammation. And also, as I mentioned earlier, the pain. Usually with infectious endophthalmitis, you'll have the majority of patients complaining of pain, whereas the opposite is true of TAS. And if there's, any ever, if there's ever any uh, uncertainty about the diagnosis of TAS, obtaining a gram stain and culture, uh, obtaining aqueous and vitreous fluid for a gram stain and culture and, uh, is very important in ruling out uh, infectious endophthalmitis. So here are some of the findings uh, characteristic of infectious endophthalmitis. The conjunctival injection is much greater. There isn't a diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema. However, there is greater hypopion. And then also the visualization of the posterior pole will be obscured by uh, opacification of the vitreous. So moving on to the causes of TAS, given that the causes of TAS are uh, numerous and varied, there needs to be an evaluation of all surgical procedures and protocols when a case of TAS arises. To simplify, I'll break down, I'll categorize the causes of TAS into two of the more common causes. Intraocular medications and solutions can uh, commonly cause TAS. Uh, balanced salt solutions, any solutions used in the eye can cause TAS if there is an irregular uh, pH uh, measurements, um, ionic composition is off, or even or if there's some contamination within the solution. More commonly, topical uh, ophthalmic drops that contain preservatives and stabilizing agents are damaging to the corneal endothelium, uh, which is very sensitive to these agents, and that's more, one of the more common causes of TAS. Uh, epinephrine that's added to BSS during the surgery to help with pupil dilation commonly contains stabilizing agents um, like bisulfites and metasulfites, or preservatives like benzalkonium chloride, and these will are very toxic to the corneal endothelium. Also, I would just want to bring your attention to OVDs, uh, ophthalmic viscosurgical devices, which are toxic in and of themselves if they're left in the eyes, but they're also, uh, there's also a chance that if the surgical equipment used is not cleaned properly, that they may retain some in the lumen. And upon subsequent surgical procedures, these can be released into the anterior chamber of the eye, causing, uh, causing an inflammatory reaction. One of the other major causes of TAS that was noted to be uh, one of the most common causes during a 2006 six TAS outbreak in North America was the cleaning and sterilization of instruments. Uh, this includes reusable cannulas and hand pieces um, and also talks about the enzymes and detergents and ultrasound baths. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, these lumens of these hand pieces may have retained cortical material or uh, dried OVD that is not uh, removed sufficiently uh, through the sterilization process. These, are, these persist and allow for further contamination in, in subsequent surgeries. The enzymes and detergents are also noted to not be necessary given that the bio burden accumulated on these equipments during the procedure itself is not so great compared to other uh, general surger surgical techniques and instruments. Therefore, the toxicity of the enzymes and deter detergents, if not rinsed away properly, uh, will create more problems than, uh, than, they, than they help. And ultrasound baths, similarly, are not necessary given the low bio burden uh, during, uh, during cataract surgeries. 
and these have a tendency to get contaminated with gram-negative bacteria, producing endospores that are not um, that are not denatured during sterilization. And finally, poorly constructed wounds can also cause uh, sub allow for substances to enter the anterior segment during uh, surgery and after surgery. So treatment, as I mentioned, prevention is the best form of treatment. So making sure that surgical procedures and protocols are adhered to uh, strictly is the best way to avoid a, a complication of tasks. However, if there is a complication of tasks, you'd want to immediately treat them to reduce the inflammatory response. Removing any residual material that may be causing a toxic insult is necessary, but then the medical treatment is generally a topical prednisolone acetate, 1% every one hour, with close observation and follow-ups uh, to visualize improvement of the inflammation in the anterior chamber and also to make sure that intraocular pressures are maintained. And then it's also important to analyze the outbreak. Uh, ASCRS has created an ad hoc task force that will help analyze any of these uh, outbreaks of tasks. It's, uh, it's readily available on a website that I'll just mention soon. And just going to the prognosis and outcomes of tasks, usually mild, most cases of tasks are mild and there'll be re resolution of the anterior segment inflammation and corneal edema within days to weeks with no uh, residual sequelae. It's more moderate tasks, there's a little bit longer uh, time to, for resolution of the corneal edema and the anterior segment inflammation. Some will have mild residual corneal edema, most will resolve completely, and these, uh, this group is more susceptible to elevated intraocular pressure increases. And in severe tasks, there is permanent damage to the anterior segment of the eye. You'll have persistent corneal edema, uh, possible cystoid macular edema, iris atrophy, like that fixed dilated pupil that we saw in the picture with the thinned iris stroma, and uh, severe glaucoma that is difficult to treat medically and will usually require some surgical intervention. And rarely these uh, severe task cases will require systemic medical treatment. So in summary, if you see a, diffuse, a patient with diffuse limbal to limbal corneal edema arising 12 to 48 hours post uh, anterior segment surgery, think of TAS. However, it's imperative to rule out infectious endophthalmitis and also initiate treatment immediately and monitor closely for any progression of the disease. And also, it's uh, important to analyze the outbreak. If you have a TAS outbreak, there's a, a standardized protocol and survey that is available on the ASCRS website that will allow you to receive um, receive advice on an evaluation on what may be causing the task by a task created uh, task force. That's a mouthful. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I will be one of those individuals this year that would uh, help to analyze the outbreak as as is our Dr. Mamelis. Here are my references and thank you for listening. Yes.
not a big concern. That's what everybody wants to talk about. I still worry about bilateral attacks, but, but there's no question you lose the ability to use the track of that for the first half of the second. Is that a big deal? I'm not defending the population. Right. Um, I think there will be bilateral cases. I just think it's messianic and this unwillingness to accept the fact that there's going to be some bad bilateral attacks. So it's a pretty awful situation. And bad attacks, I mean, you're going you're gonna to get something that they're going to put in both eyes. And then Nick and I have one with a, a pharmacy tech that will be six weeks of training rather than using DSS plus. You can add it to DSS, which is Highly toxic, and uh, uh, they had three cases. Fortunately, the patients actually were so toxic, complaining of injected foam it hurts. And after uh, a few cases, they got to quit using it, but all of them were used it. 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 But when they signed the file out for the family, so they would have gotten the same thing. There's no question about that. And that's not the kind of thing that we do. You can do it. No, I think our thing is like a lot of the to know that. Right, right. It's a lot of the real life. I don't want to sell any young kid that's a real risk. I think you can easily lay that out there. But I just, right now, we keep focusing on the left and right. The five hour of the past is gone. You do not have any fast kids. You do have a case years ago where in the order of substitute gentlemen. Someone who's going to reject subconscious hybrid for BSS. And uh, Jim and I suggested to reform the entertainment. He had a theory that he was like that for me. And I was like, again, this is a dead one. Jim and I said, it's extremely effective. It's extremely effective. We have an actor of thought to the truth. It's hard to know the incident because a lot of people don't recognize it. Uh, a lot of people are all like, oh, I don't know why that's in plane, but it gets better, so we don't know what you're talking about. But we know endophthalmitis now in the United States is probably somewhere between one and two people in the room, two thousand. So we can suggest we be better than we used to be better than one or two thousand. Highly tasks is the minimal time in the people. And we have a course that Nick runs, it's extremely good course. And you can tell it's a different group off of the average. Question? So Dr. Ramos would have a better understanding of yes, what yeah. Uh, yeah. We, 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 <laughs> yes. the yeah. task force right now, and we're the ones who are monitoring and we're going to do it. So they've got something to support it, it's just not online, it's just not online, it's just not online, it's just not online, it's just not online. And um, again, we're out of time, but we would have been talking about the FDA, we would have been proactive in the way of the monitoring and setting things, looking at the FDA, Thank you.